Uvanga na tvark atira ut kjervik mirunga aim inipak. In the unforgiving Arctic, survival depends on agility, strength, and endurance. To hone survival skills and pass time during the long polar winter, the games are created and passed on over generations. Each game links to the past. The high kicks allow hunters to signal across distances. Where breaking ice can take your life in a heartbeat. The games build explosive strength, mental toughness, and focus. These are the games of the North. In an environment where temperatures can drop to 60 below, the games bring people together to celebrate their culture, build community, and lift spirits during the dark days of winter. They are played in local villages and on the international stage. These games here, it's a total personal endeavor. I mean, it's a personal competition between yourself and nobody else. The link it had for my ancestors was survival, but the link it had for me was to get my culture back. Carrying the traditions of sport today are exceptional athletes like David Thomas, What's up, man? Jesse Frankson, <laughs> and Elizabeth Rexford. David lives with his grandmother near Alaska's largest city, Anchorage. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, you want my coffee? I sure want coffee. Grandma is a coffee lady. <laughs> if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be who I am today. We ask you to bless this good day, man. Yeah. I never have this kind for a long time. Me too. She made me see from a different point of view of the traditional ways. Eskimo food is the best food for doing anything. Yeah. I remember when I was a young child and my father, uh, he was showing me one of the games and he was doing the one arm reach and he did that in a way I haven't seen anybody else do it. He would balance his body weight on his fingertips from there, that inspired me. I've never been out on the sea ice before. Never seen a seal in the wild before. Mm, I love you so much. Okay, i see you later. Love see you, you, Graham. Bye. Yep. Thank you. The Native Games, they gave me something to look up to. They gave me goals and a way to challenge myself. David inspires others wherever he competes, such as his first visit to America's northernmost settlement, Barrow, in the middle of the day in mid-December. Man, I'm just glad that I could be here. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. There's a lot of little kids that look up to a lot of really good athletes, so. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna have a little fan club. At the traditional Barrow Christmas games, David tries a game of endurance designed to help prevent frostbite by keeping circulation in the toes. Some of the guys encouraged me to go up. I just tried it and I was just testing myself, just walking out very slowly. I, I thought I would only last for just a few feet. But then when I really wanted to give up, I just got the crowd to encourage me some more. With everybody here, that just pushed me to go further. I know that the day after, my toes are killing me. The Alaska high kick is a way hunters can stay fit in tight quarters during storms and long polar nights. You start from a sitting position, and then from here, 
you thrust your body up off the floor, kick your target, land, and maintain your balance. No part of your body can touch the floor other than your kicking foot and your balancing hand. You guys want to see him break the record? David attempts to beat the Alaska state record of seven feet, six inches. Yeah, you seem to cut your toenails for a bit. When I'm out there on the floor, I'm representing my family very well and our people, who we are as a native people. These are the very skills that uh, the elders remember from way back. And you could see it in their faces that if they were sitting there in awe, bringing back memories. We need to continue that with our youngsters. I am home. Their eyes sings to me. And the ocean talks to me. When my ancestors lived long ago, I'm in your pack. I'm Big Bob Aiken from Bear, Alaska, my hometown. These aren't just games, they're survival skills. My grandparents and his grandparents made these games for a purpose. The life's hard out here, and when you get into the arena, that's not the real world. The real world is out on the ice floor. Endurance, the ability to bear grueling pain and fatigue, is key to survival in the Arctic. You're able to endure a lot of things, and you, you think to yourself, wow, I didn't think I would endure so much pain like that. Straight back. Like a heartbreak. A number of native games test endurance, including the knuckle hop, which mimics the motion of a seal on ice. Airplane, or Eagle Carry, is a game that tests a hunter's strength, endurance, and mental toughness. A four-man carrier was made to carry many seals as possible. You carry four men, 150 pounds each, and you pick them off the ground, and you walk as far as you can, as hard as you can, until you finally collapse. And when you finally collapse under the weight, you feel your spirit that wants to fly. Elizabeth is a world champion in the native games, as well as an Ivy League student and rugby player at Dartmouth College. Indian law gives us a very good vista to revisit some of these principles by the kinds of political compacts that governments make with their citizens. One of the noticeable differences with the Alaskan girls is they have really strong core muscles. We train for core strength, but they've, they come in with it. Their natural strength is much greater than a lot of the other girls. I mean, it's, it's striking. Elizabeth returns to her hometown of Barrow regularly to visit family and to train. Big chains going from New Hampshire to to Alaska, huh? Yeah, it's nice to be back. The thing I miss most about Alaska is the people. I miss the cold. I miss the ice too. Spring whaling, it's probably the most amazing place on earth right there at that time. 24 hours of light and the ice you can see for long forever. I wanted to learn my language and be back with my family. And well, I'm still not fluent, but I feel more comfortable around my grandma. 
She'll, she'll say more things to me in Inupiaq now that she knows I understand a little more. So that's good. I've learned a lot about myself doing the games and about my culture. Elizabeth is part of a culture that thrives in one of the world's most extreme climates. During the frigid winter months, when there is no sunlight, people gather indoors to sing, dance, and play games. The rules of this laughing game are simple. Opponents laugh while the feather is airborne. When the feather touches the ground, laughter stops, and the stare down begins. Laugh out of order or smile during the stare down, and you are eliminated. Other games of fun include the blanket toss, the crab walk, and the uplifting butt hop. Holding these games is a clear reminder of how life used to be back then and what it could still be in the future. I'm Jesse Frankson, <laughs> going to Alaska, my hometown. <laughs> Jesse Frankson holds more records than anyone in the history of the Native Games. Nine feet, eight inches in the one-foot high kick. Oh, 64 inches in the kneel jump. Five feet, 10 inches in the one-arm reach. And the Guinness World Record for the highest martial arts kick. keeps me in shape is going out hunting all over these mountains, all through the country, 90 mile trips in a day through some really rough terrain. Now that's pretty much a workout right there, just going out hunting. In addition to hunting, games such as the Eskimo stick pull keep Jesse grounded in his culture. The object of the game is to wrestle the seal out of his breathing hole. My dad and I are out hunting together, you know, any time we can to get away from work. All year long, and I don't see any young faces out there. I can see the traditions and everything just kind of disappearing with uh, the younger generation, you know, because they're, like, losing interest. Uh, we have to figure out some way to get them back into hunting. Jesse is passing on these traditions to his family leading his brother Solomon in the same way of life. Oh, yeah, David's coming in today. Jesse invites David seal hunting, helping him reconnect with his culture. Meeting Jesse to the game gave me the opportunity to go hunting with him and see a side of my past that I never really knew. First time in Point Home. Yep. Kind of surprised to see the paved roads, probably. <laughs> see, what I've been doing lately is trying to get all the animals I can, because I've been watching the ice for the past month and a half now, and this ice has never left all year. So once it breaks off, I don't think it's going to come back. Once this ice leaves, so did animals. If there's no ice, there's no animals. On the shifting sea ice, both hunters rely on the agility, strength, and awareness they develop through the games. Man's got to know his limitation. And when the seal hunters brought out all these games, the kneel jumps, scissor broad jump, these jumping events, has direct link to the land we live in. We train you to make one quick, explosive decision without any hesitation. If you hesitate, you die. Once you fall in the water, that was it. After two weeks of hunting, we finally caught an Uruk, a bearded seal.
How many pounds do you think this ugric is? Uh, from the looks of it, about 400. Wow. 350 to 400. This will be my first seal that I bring home and the first time that my family will work on a seal in over 20 years. Bob, we'll come back. Yeah. A little hot. You gotta come back and get a few more boxes of those seals. Yeah. <laughs> Being able to provide for my family and also for elders, that made me realize uh, I want to live the traditional ways. Figuratively and literally, Big Bob Aiken is a giant in the native games. Time of the moment to your partner. Roger. How are you this fine morning? The stories that I heard about Big Bob was, you know, you know, he's the biggest Eskimo in the world. You know, he's held these records for 10 years straight. And, you know, he's he's, a, he's the strongest native there is. You know, they said, keep her out for Big Bob, and, you know, couldn't miss him. Come on, Come on. How are you doing there, buddy? I'm walking down there, and he, he was huge, bigger than life. Straight from barrel. <laughs> right on. From that time on, that I wanted to learn as much as I could from him. He was willing to teach me everything he knew. 83. I started coaching. Everything I knew, I put into Brian. He had this ability to jump, and all it needed was being perfected. He didn't know he could jump until one of his friends convinced him. I knew he had the ability. He knew he had the ability. All it needed was a little bit of coaching, and that's all it took. To this day, he's... he's one of my best friends, if not my best friend. Thanks in part to Bob's coaching, Brian holds one of the most enduring world records in the native games. His mark of eight feet, eight inches for the two foot high kick remains untouched after more than 20 years. A lot of years I was stingy with the record. I wanted to keep it, you know, for as long as I could because it was, you know, it was a nice feather in a hat. You know, as I got older, I started understanding really what the games really mean. If I was to hold the record for forever, for the rest of my life, and not see it broken, then that that would tell me that uh, uh, my culture and the people aren't getting stronger. When that two-foot record is broken, whoever breaks it, I want to be there to shake their hand. That's going to be an exciting day. Hi, everybody, ready? Yeah. I'm Big Bob, the biggest Eskimo in the world today. I want to introduce to you the Barry Dancer. Come on, give it up. All the way from Barrow. Motion dances tell stories from long ago and today. Indigenous people throughout the North gather for the World Eskimo Indian Olympics. And every two years, the circumpolar nations send their best athletes to a different host nation to compete in the International Arctic Winter Games. Every country that's involved and every team, they're all of the same frame of mind, just really having a good time. The Arctic Winter Games unite native people from all corners of the polar ice. Russia, Finland, Norway, Greenland, Canada, and Alaska. More than 2,000 athletes compete. Medals in the shape of the traditional Eskimo knife, the Ulu, are given to the top three in each event. You can really see the direct uh, correlation between when we were all, you know, pretty much a single people sharing the things that we did, and when we separated out, we still had a lot of the things that. Uh, uh, we shared in common. Camaraderie is awesome here. <laughs> a lot of games that a lot of people don't know about that we play up up in Wainwright, and you could use the games for survival. 
if you go out seal hunting on the ice, you could do the kneel jump if the ice breaks. Elizabeth competes in several events alongside the best female Native Games athletes in the world. I won two golds, one silver, three bronze, and the women's all-around athlete. Right to win the one-foot high kick, David must reach a personal best of 8 feet 11 inches. David's final attempt for the gold Ulu and his personal best. Personal best. When the games start bringing your best out of you, you're able to endure a lot of things. The life's hard out here in the real world. While we're playing it, we're not aware of it, but something inside you forms so perfectly. The will to survive. You have this ability to endure. It becomes helpful in a time of grief, a time of loss. When you know your own limitations, it becomes a lot easier to deal with. My son. With the games, that was just something positive, something really to look up to and be proud of. It made uh, my family really proud. And, uh, and to watch me keep that tradition going and uh, passing it on. The youth are really important and sometimes I worry about the games because I don't see a lot of new upcoming youth and if you do, they're not staying. In the face of modern pressures and unprecedented change, the elders of today are committed to keeping alive the traditions and building hope for future generations. You'll be okay. Keep the interest in the young kids these days is, uh, is, is pretty much more important now than it's ever been. We're keeping these games alive to keep our culture alive. You know. They've got a beautiful culture. Your feet were about well, two inches past it. Don't talk yourself out of it. This is what separates you guys from everybody else. You can do this. Just have no doubts. I want to give as much back as I can now. Teach what I know, you know, the knowledge and the experience and uh, some of the lessons of life that I've, that I've experienced. And, we need to make sure we keep these games strong so we don't, we don't lose another piece of our culture. And Jazz runs at it so fast. On the other side in front of it. You're running to the ball way too fast because once, once you finally stop, you're still going to sell. You got to slow down and put all your power into going straight up. Native Games superstars are counted on to share their knowledge and help others exceed their personal best. I think I'll be playing the games uh, for a long time as uh, a way to, to pass it on. I might not be as competitive, but I'll still have the same passion about the games to inspire somebody to keep it going. Passed from generation to generation, the games of the North help Arctic peoples adapt to change. They test endurance, strength, and agility. They bring people together to have fun. Most of all, they celebrate the traditions and rich heritage of one of the world's oldest and most adaptable cultures. The games you play are given to you so that you are aware, fully aware of who you are inside. Then you can challenge the elements with the wisdom of our ancestors, then survive anywhere.
that up. <laughs> you know, he's laughing too. <laughs> <laughs>